Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Lisa, and I'm here to share a repost from Margaret Blake. The title is Concerning the Once Saved, Always Saved Doctrine. 2 Timothy 4, verses 1-4 through 4. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. Hear what the Lord says. They have given themselves over to the tickling of their ears. Yes, you heard right. They are inclining their hearing to what tickles their ears, to what strikes their fancy. They are like gadflies, flitting about here and there with no substance to their faith. They are a people who must have their gratification. They have no discernment because they are intent on being led by their own understanding and are zealous for their own ways. And what do I say to them? So be it. If they will not listen, so be it. How few of my children bother to read my word for themselves. Most would rather look for and latch on to the doctrine of others that agrees with their own thinking and that which appeases their self-indulgent appetites and makes them feel good. This is the way of the world. It has no place in me, nor shall have. What does this mean? Does this mean that I am rejecting my children? On the contrary, this means that those who profess to believe in me, who call themselves by my name, but who continue to live their lives according to their own thoughts and ways, will find themselves left behind when I come for my bride. They will all too late come to realize that their self-gratifying ways and lack of understanding have resulted in their not being ready for my return. They will discover through the shocking realization that their stiff-necked pride of self and reliance upon another's teaching has led them astray. They will have to endure the tribulation, all because they were intent on believing false doctrine and going their own way. Does not my word say, My people perish for lack of understanding? Nowhere in my word does it say, Once saved, always saved. Where is this statement in my word? I never spoke it. I cannot find it. What is my desire and the desire of my Father is that no one perish. But it is our desire. We cannot make it be so. It is a gift freely given. The choice is up to each person. Therefore, choose this day whom you will serve, God or your own ways or the ways of another. Life and death have been set before you. Choose life that you may live and your children after you. Come and let us take a look at what my word does say. Romans 8 verses 38 through 39. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. My Father and I will never stop loving you, even if you choose your own way or the way of another. John 10 verses 25 through 29 
Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believed not the works that I do in my Father's name. They bear witness of me, but you believe not, because you are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. This does not say that they cannot foolishly leave the sanctity and safety of my life and hand by going their own way. Every word of my word is valuable and essential to your lives here on earth and to the well-being of your lives. Second Thessalonians 2 verses 1 through 3 Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. What do you think is the falling away first? It is referring to believers who have turned away from me, the once saved, always saved is clearly refuted here. Let him who has ears hear. Luke 8 verses 11 through 15, the parable of the sower explained. Now the parable is this, the seed of the word of God. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear. Then the devil comes and takes away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. But the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear, receive the word with joy, and these have no root, but who believe for a while, and in time of temptation fall away. Now the ones that fell among thorns are those who, when they have heard, go out and are choked with cares, riches, and pleasures of life, and bring no fruit to maturity. But the ones that fell on the good ground are those who, having heard the word with a noble and good heart, keep it and bear fruit with patience. Not everyone who says they believe remains in me. Second Peter 3 verses 10 through 18, the day of the Lord. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the, in the night in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Be steadfast, therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things. Be diligent to be found by him in peace, without spot and blameless, and consider that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, has written to you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction, as they do also the rest of the scriptures. You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, Beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the wicked. 
but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You are warned to remain faithful and steadfast, lest you are led away in error. Just as salvation is a gift freely given and freely received, so is free will. That is why I said to my Father, Not my will, but your will be done. I was given the freedom to choose to do the will of my Father or not. So it is for all my children. When you pray, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, Consider the meaning of it and apply it to your own lives. Very often this prayer is prayed by my children from memory, without heart connection, and no application to their own lives. It is sad that my prayer, Matthew 6 verses 9 through 13, and my word have become so trite and nothing more than a byword to many. There is more interest and zeal for reading the writings of others about me and my word than for me and the reading and studying of my word. How do you expect to draw nearer to me if what you are adhering to in thought and sentiment is not of me? I do not go through another to reach my people, but I do utilize and work within those faithful to me to be my light bearers and messengers, and even those who are opposed to me I will use to be the stepping stones for my hand of grace to operate upon and within. All who and what belong to me and all that is in the world are part of the great mechanism of my grace that is ever at work for the benefit of my children and my creation. And yes, I will, as I determine, use the enemy and the things of the enemy to bring about that which I have purposed of necessity. I have told you my thoughts, and my ways are above your thoughts and ways. But you, my children, have been saved by grace through faith, and this is not of your own works, but it is a gift from God, so none of you may boast of yourselves. Even your believing was a gift when you received the gift of the measure of faith, for the function and purpose of faith is to believe. Or did you think that you believed in your own strength? Truly, I tell you that you can do nothing in your own strength. You did not choose me. I chose you. Long before the foundations of the earth were laid, I knew you. You are my creation, and I am your creator, your God. My grace is in a continual state of operation. I'm going to say that again. My grace is in a continual state of operation in your lives and upon the earth. Did you think it was just to save you from going to hell? No. My grace is ever-present and ever at work, saving my children from the sin of the world and from their own sins and fallings. My grace is not only sufficient for whatever your need is and the needs of my creation, but is ever-abounding greater than all sin. You were predestined in me, Therefore, remain in me, for the branch cannot live unless it remains on the vine, nor can it bear fruit. I am the vine. I am the light of this world, and in me there is not darkness. That which comes from the flesh and soul is not of me, and cannot have a part in me. But when you seek me with all your heart, you will find me, for I will let you find me, and I will cleanse you of all that is not of me. If you walk in the light as he, Father God, is in the light, then you fellowship, have community with one another and the blood of his Son. Jesus will cleanse you of all sin. You cannot make yourself clean. This can only be done by me. I am your Savior, 
your Redeemer. I am your shepherd. Many who call themselves shepherds of my people have not been appointed by me, and many are leading my sheep astray. Take heed, for many wolves in sheep's clothing are now among the flock of my people. Who are you following? Do not be unwise by being content in your own thoughts and ways, or the ways and doctrines of another. Or you will be like the foolish virgins, Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13, who did not bother to trim the wicks of their lamps and carry extra oil. The flame of my light can only burn brightly in each of my children when their wick is trimmed. What is the wick? The wick is your life, your soul, and body, your flesh, your ways. The extra oil is my life that invigorates your spirits and fills you to overflowing by my word and the Holy Spirit, whom my Father has given each of you to reveal all truth to you and to lead you unto all un- all righteousness. My word and the power of the Holy Spirit are your wick-trimming tools, along with your willingness to submit yourselves unto God and resist the devil. Your ways must give way to my ways. My thoughts must become your thoughts. You must renew your mind with my word and adhere to sound doctrine that can only be found in my word. What do you think keeping your wick trimmed means? My word is essential to your lives on earth. If you do not take the time to read it for yourselves, at least ask me to place you under the tutelage of one of my faithful servants who will teach you from my word. For is it not written in my word, all your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children? In righteousness you shall be established. You shall be far from oppression, for you shall not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near you. Isaiah 54 verses 13 and 14. The absurdity of the determination of those of my children who are intent on their own ways will be their undoing. Do not be deceived. You will not be ready at the time of my return if you continue to reject the warnings and admonishing of my messengers and continue to live your lives according to your whims and fancies. Do not be deceived. The choice is yours. Can two walk together if they do not agree? Do not be wise unto yourselves, but seek first the kingdom of God and my righteousness, and all that you need will be given to you. Repent of your foolishness and self-righteousness while there is still time. Question Question, question, what about Romans 1 verses 3 through 14? Doesn't it mean we have been predestined in Christ and cannot be lost because we are sealed by the Holy Spirit? This is my answer. Read my word, read my word, read my word. And that is the end of this first message. There are several scriptures that go with this first word here. I'm going to share the link to the part one and now for part two. Am I not God and am I not your father and perfect in all my ways? All good and loving parents tend to the needs of all their children and recognize that each one of their children is unique. When a word of correction is needed for one of their children for whatever reason, it is not withheld because of worry of offending the other children who are not in need of correction and discipline. No, 
the correction is given along with a review of the parental rules and family guidelines. Depending on the severity of the error or misbehavior, a consequence may follow, especially if a previous warning was already given. Always an expectation of future obedience is part of the full correction and discipline, as well as all necessary and relevant information and knowledge. The Lord then said, Tell all my children who are offended by the correction and warnings I have given through my messengers concerning the false doctrine of once saved, always saved, to stop their nonsense. If this word of correction does not apply to them, then they need not behave like disrespectful children who dispute their parents' discipline of their siblings. Tell them that their behavior is not beneficial to their brothers and sisters who are in need of correction, and that what they are saying and doing can and is causing many to continue in error or to come into error. Tell them that they themselves have now been corrected of their erroneous words and stance, and if they do not receive this correction, then they are in disobedience to me. The Lord continued, Every child of mine will be disciplined accordingly as needed, for I will not withhold the correction and discipline necessary to the lives of my children, whom I dearly love. My word says, The Lord chastises those who come, those whom he loves. If a word given to one of my messengers does not apply directly to you, then why do you become a stumbling block to your brothers and sisters who are in need of receiving it? Why do you reject and condemn that which is beneficial to them? For when one member is sorry, for when one member in my body is in error, the whole of my body is affected. Likewise, my children who are obedient to me provide a benefit to the whole body. All my children benefit when one who walked in error and disobedience is edified by my word and repents. Why do you not see to my word for your own edification so that you may become a benefit to others in my body rather than being a hindrance? My word stands as the final authority on every matter. What you think and say, if it is not in agreement with my word, must come into agreement with me. My word is not a smorgasbord that you get to pick and choose from. Your thoughts and your ways are not my thoughts and ways. Familiarize yourselves with my word so that you may walk in agreement with me and those of my children who are obedient to me and my word. My word has been given to all of my children, so that you may walk together in agreement and have fellowship with one another. Receive your correction and repent. Yeshua, Jesus. And that is the end of this second message. Again, I will share the links to both of these messages and all the scriptural references are with these words. I pray you all have a beautiful day in the Lord. God bless each and every one of you. And I will see you either next video or in the air. Bye-bye.